I think we could all tell from how we open things that the, the pastor might be crazy, but he's a terrible actor. <laughs> I mean, all you can do is pray for me. What can I tell you? But I will, I will use that lame acting to at least let you understand that, um, listen, as we grow, there is no area that will need help more and is any more important than our kids' area. Would you agree? And so, first of all, if you're willing to um, just even um, volunteer for whichever services or once a month or maybe you want to do it every week for one particular service, it doesn't matter. If you will and you can help 15 minutes prior to any, any um, particular service, I'll put your name down. And as long as you don't scare children or parents, you'll be called back. Um, and uh, she would love to have help you. So that's, that's maybe tops, a, a 20 minute commitment, okay? Be here early enough to, to, to check people in so that she can tend to, to making sure the kids don't kill each other or do anything else that they would already do at home. But listen, it's so good to have you here with us today. Um, uh, couldn't you feel God in the worship? You, you, listen, sometimes, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, but listen, when you do, you do, and you know it. Um, and I, I thank God for the whole whole team and, and everybody that, that plays a part in that. Today, um, I always get excited about sharing things that God gives me, but I really get excited when it's things that I know are not only practical, but, but um, uh, life-altering. And that is um, learning how to, to hear God's voice, even knowing how God speaks. Today, if you got your worship guide, I'm going to be sharing with you a message entitled, Seven Ways That God Speaks. Seven ways that God speaks. I, I was looking back. I, I try to do this. I try to look back and, and see um, uh, where, what we have covered over the years and, 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 and over this past year and this and that. And it had been like at least a year and a half or so since we've tackled this, this topic of um, looking specifically at how God uh, speaks with us. Now, I want to say this as a disclaimer before we get into this message. This is not an exhaustive list. Uh, we would never be able to know all the ways that God speaks. Uh, but these are seven specific ways we know he speaks to us. And we know um, that, that, that are primary ways that he speaks. Uh, I don't have it up on the screen, but I want to I share with you two verses before we get going. Job 33, 14. Write that verse down. Job 33, 14. Job said, for God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. Okay, so it's telling us right there, God speaks in, in many, many ways, and he speaks again and again and again, but we often don't recognize it. And then John 10, 27, in John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Listen, if today you are a believer in Jesus Christ, and if today you're sincere about your walk with God, then, then you're in the right place today because you're going to hear clearly how to follow God. How can you follow God if you don't even know how God speaks? Okay? And, and yet we have to be open to what he is uh, speaking to us. Would you bow your heads in prayer as we get into this message? Dear Heavenly Father, God, open our eyes to see what you want us to see. Open up our ears to hear what you want us to hear. And open up our hearts, that not only so that we might be informed of your truth, but be transformed uh, in your spirit and truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. One, one way that I think even a child would fully understand that God speaks is this. God speaks through all he has created. God speaks through all he has created. Now, you can't blame how all of the created things that God has created act or choose to, to act. Um, on, on God. We all get free will. We all get to make choices. So you can't blame people who chose to walk their own way. You can't blame uh, God on that. God, God made every person unique. God made every person wonderful. But only as we seek God and we seek to, to walk with him can we be who he created us to be. But I ask you this. Have you ever seen the sunrise? Well, be honest with you. I try, I try not to see the sunrise. Okay? Some of y'all just, you have, you have better coffee than me. That's all I'm going to say. Okay? I don't mind seeing it if I'm up. I really don't want to meet you with it. Okay? Um, in fact, if I pray with you right at sunrise, you know I really love you. Okay? If I answer the phone when you call at sunrise, I, I, I need, none of this hit me, Brother Trey, at the first service. So I want to ask you, though. Have you ever seen the sunrise? Have you ever seen the sunset? Have you ever seen uh, the mountains? 
in their beauty? Have you ever seen the ocean waves and a, and a beautiful beach that you go, man, what a God? Have you ever seen um, just a, a portion of all the animals that God has created uniquely? And, and I would love to have been on the, um, Noah's Ark because I would have just loved to have seen all the different two-by-twos, except if the snakes were crawling up in there. How many of you agree with me? There is no such thing as a good snake. At our house, and man, God's freeing me up at this 11 o'clock service. This is just bonus. At my house, my wife, not only can she catch possums, not catch them, can she run possums out, but go ahead and put a snake in front of her, okay? She's tended to two in the last two weeks, and I hadn't even seen them. Don't care to, okay? She might have said, well, it was just a small one. I'm going... Nobody likes a small one. She said, well, no, it, was, it wasn't poisonous ones. Was, I said, I don't like none. Okay? All right? I feel about snakes the same way I do about the devil. I don't want to associate with any of them anymore than I have to. Okay? And if I am dealing with them, I like to run them out the room. Okay? But if you want to run them out for me, I think you can tell right now. Barney Fife will be just fine with that. How many of you love beautiful flowers? Um, do we have any flower aholics here? Which means every week you're looking to buy one more flower. If it's on sale or if it's not on sale. You know, I know some people like that, though. I'm serious. They're like, listen, you know, it, it, I know guys that, are, that realize, hey, if you don't let that woman get those flowers, she's leaving you. But aren't, aren't flowers beautiful? Now, I don't understand why God lets those beautiful azaleas in my yard look so great for one week. <laughs> and then he goes from a, a beautiful painting to, what you have afterwards. I don't understand that. Maybe some of you can share with me after service. But I'm amazed when he makes them bloom. Have any of you ever seen a newborn baby cry? And when you see that newborn baby, listen, it's just something about new life, isn't it? I want you to hear me. Anytime you see things that man can't explain, God's saying, listen, I'm God. Look how great I am. Look how good I am. Look, look, at, look at what I can do opposed to what you can do. Listen, sometimes you just need to step outside or look out your window, and God will speak to you. I always say it does not take a rocket scientist. It, does not ta it doesn't matter your age for you to be able to realize that there's a God and that you're not him. Psalm 8, verse 1 and 3 and 4 says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of him? Human beings that you care for them. Listen, God doesn't have to um, have a relationship with you and I. He doesn't have to, to, to invite us into a personal, everyday walking relationship to where we can know him as our father. He doesn't have to do that. He chose to do that. He pursued you and me. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Psalm 19, verses 1 through 4, it says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. Listen, even when you're um, traveling, Let's say you chose to do that and you see some other states and, and some other sceneries. You can't help but go, how great is our God? Romans 1.20 says, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. There's no person in any place and any um, country, any language that cannot see the greatness of God if they're looking for it. But secondly, we need to know that God speaks through every word in Scripture. God speaks through every word in Scripture. Contrary to how society lives, the number one purchased book is still the Bible. Doesn't mean we read our Bibles like we should. It doesn't mean other people read their Bibles like they should. But let me tell you why it's so sought after. Because there is no other book like it. It's the owner's manual for life. From Genesis to Revelation, it is all God-breathed. It all has a purpose, and God has a plan for it. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it says, All Scripture is God-breathed. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, 
correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I'm going to tell you something that you need not forget. You cannot know God's will without knowing God's word. You can't. Because the, the, the knowledge that we get from God's word, it is what lets us know the rules in which we should live life. And it, it shows us the priorities. It shows us how we're to pursue the Lord. It tells us what's wrong from right. Listen, if you're confused about what's wrong and right, just go to the word of God. It doesn't matter what the laws of man are. It's a matter of what God says right is or wrong is. But I want you to notice it, it says it, it, it thoroughly equips each of us. For every good work. If you want to be thoroughly equipped as a dad, as a mom, as a spouse, as a child, as a person, your, your, your best way to do that is to keep learning the word of God and not only get it into your mind, but get it into your heart and apply it to your life. Most people, when they think about the word, they want to go to the things that make them feel better, give you um, butterflies. But some things we go to the word of God and it, we got to come to the Word of God teachable. I think one of the greatest qualities of any man is humility and teachableness. And I think that's the greatest quality for any of us. We've all, we all know what it's like to, to be not teachable, like we're not listening, versus, hey, God, I've done this enough. I've screwed it up enough on my own. God, show me the right way. What about this correcting part? We have to be willing to let God correct us. There's times I've been in the Word of God, and it convicted me on the husband I needed to be, the father I needed to be, the person I needed to be, and it gets all up in my business. I'm fine with God getting up all in my business because God doesn't do it to make me feel bad. God does it to show me there's a better way. Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus said, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Listen, all of the Word of God is the, the breath of God. God is speaking to you. And just like you need certain uh, food uh, to stay healthy, if you do not get a healthy dose of the Word of God in you, you will be what I call spiritually malnourished. You'll start losing it a little bit. Because listen, the Bible, the Bible, I think it says in um, Revelation, I mean, um, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it talks about through the renewing of your mind, you will know God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Listen, oftentimes, in order to gut the wrong perspective, you got to renew it with the right perspective. And so you got to meditate on God's word, and, and, and you got to go, okay, well, whatever God wants, I want. And, and, and you can have peace in that. You can have confidence in that. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God, it is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Listen, when we have the Bible, it is not our place to beat somebody over the head with it, okay? Doesn't mean we disown it, but all of us, we're just messengers, right? We're just, the Word of God is for all of us. All of us have things in our lives that get exposed when Scripture sheds light on what's truth. We all realize, man, I fall, I fall short, but I don't want to, I don't want to just Live my way. I want to live according to his word. Listen, the only way you came to know Jesus Christ was you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ through the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Everything I share with you, regardless of any twists or turns or, or stuff that's nonsense, I'm telling you right now, when I, when I share with you the word, it's always truth, and it's always working. And, and when you mix that with, with the spirit and openness in the room, it always changes. Like the people in here who are really hungry for the word of God, and you came here to meet with God, not just go to church. You came here to hear from God. You hear him if you're listening. God speaks. Listen, the number one way he speaks is through his word, and you need to know that. Okay? It's the first filter. It, it always has to be applied into things. Thirdly, God speaks through his indwelling Holy Spirit indwelling Holy Spirit. When Jesus was still living in human form, he promised to his earliest disciples when they were all freaked out about the fact that he was no longer going to um, be with them in physical form, that he was going to ascend back into heaven because his, his physical purpose had served his, his, his course uh, through his life and, 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 and love and, and in his death on the cross. Um, he promised them, he's like, listen, I'm going to send to you my spirit. 
that will be with you always. John 15, 26, Jesus said, But I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify about me. Do you know what shows a change in somebody? When the spirit of God gets within somebody and they have a new spirit. They're still the same person. But the spirits change because they have received Christ into their heart. They know in their heart they can't walk back out and live like everybody else and not have conviction about it because they know they're no longer their own. They were bought with a price, the price of God's son. John 16, 13 says, when the truth, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Now, it's very important you write this down. The Spirit of God will never tell you anything that, that um, contradicts the Word of God. Okay? So you got to make sure. Listen, sometimes it's God and sometimes it's gas. It, the joke didn't go well either the first service. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm used to that. Just, just for now, and if I say something, just make me feel like it, it was normal. Listen, God's Word says that every believer, if they're a true believer in Jesus Christ and they become a true spiritually reborn child of God, why have we become spiritually reborn? Because now His Spirit lives within us. We receive this gift of the Holy Spirit. This gift, it not only guides us like a navigational tool inside of us, but, but it also um, changes us from the inside out. Romans 8 9 says the Spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you. Listen, you need to quit expecting people who are absolutely full of themselves to act like they're full of Christ. They're full of themselves. By the way, maturity is not being full of yourself. Getting right with God is not waking up each day telling God what you're going to do. It's waking up each day saying, hey, he woke me up. He got me up. What you got planned, God? What do you want? Listen, I, I, I have too much of a healthy fear of the Lord since I know that, that the Lord holds everything in his hand and he knows everything, not just some things. That makes me accountable. I have a healthy fear of the Lord. Not, I, I want to make sure that the Lord's on my side because I wouldn't want to live in this world and not know that I hadn't made things right with the Lord. I'd be concerned about that as, as a family. I'd be concerned about that as an individual trying to pursue anything. Because listen, you cannot get where God wants you to go apart from God helping you. And you need the truth of God as your roadmap. You need the Spirit of God guiding you step by step. Because otherwise, you'll go just like everybody else. He'll build a deluxe pickup truck. Look at Galatians 5.16. It says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Listen, you will always have a sinful nature. You will always have a, um, desires that sometimes don't line up with God's desire. What makes the difference is, are you letting the Spirit of God lead, or are you going with your gut instead of your God? Listen, here's how God uses the Holy Spirit. You can write it down. He uses it to guide us. He uses it to remind us. How many times have you heard a scripture? You might have heard it on a Sunday morning, or you might have meditated it on, on it some long time back, and you're out and about, and all of a sudden you run into a crisis that God brings through his spirit the remembrance of that scripture to hold on to. Just as much as somebody going, man, okay, right now things feel upside down, and you're like, but he says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for hope, to give you a future, not to harm you. All of a sudden, you, you, your spirit's lifted. You go, God, it's crazy right now, but uh, I know you got a plan. So he uses the spirit to, to guide us, to remind us. Listen to this part. Convict us. Convict us. And to give us his peace. I've made a lot of big, big decisions and moves as a, as a person and as a family. Um, I, I, I've told you before, I cannot think of any time in my life for the last 30 and a half years that I got to do just like any normal Joe and just decide what job I was going to do based on whatever money it paid. I, I, in order for me to follow the Lord, I had to just, when you, how many of you know when you surrender, you got to make sure you surrender no matter what it costs, okay? That works for all of us. And so any time we'd make a big move, I'd have to try to figure out God in it, not just where did I want to go, what would I like to do, what looked good to me. God gives you a peace or he gives you a lack of peace when you're pursuing something. If you don't have the peace of God and the assurance of God that you're supposed to even be going the direction you're going, you need to stop right there. You need to, if you're already there and you need to turn around, you need to not be afraid to turn around and say, hey, you know what? Sometimes we just get off track. We all do, don't we? The Spirit of God 
will be like a blinker inside of you saying, hey, turn right, turn left, sit still, wait. Or, hey, listen, you already know, son, man, woman, young, young person, you already know you shouldn't do this. Why are you even praying about it? This is not in line with my spirit. This is not in line with my truth. But fourthly, God speaks through God-sent, obedient messengers. God speaks through God-sent, obedient messengers. None of us, if we're in Christ, have not been called and have not been sent to love, lift, and lead other people to Jesus by the way we live, by the way we love, and by who we represent. Listen, the only reason any of us in this room know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord is because somebody was faithful. Somebody shared with you what someone once shared with them. You need not forget those people. You need to, you need to remember those people. I, I've, I've had some pastors that really impacted me. I don't forget them. I, I, I thank them. Okay? I go back to them and I say, listen, um, my ministry is your ministry because they had impact. Listen, most of you, you would not be where you are if not for God sending people. Even, even he might have sent some people. They had to run you down. They sent you some people that acted like Craig Crosby. They just would not quit. They kept going down aisle two and three at a grocery store. Listen, obedience leads to opportunity. If you want to be used by God, you'll be used by God every time you make yourself available. Um, have you ever thought about this? You could be, and you often are, if you're obeying God, you can be somebody's answer to prayer. Sometimes somebody just needs to know somebody cares. Sometimes somebody just needs to know somebody, um, uh, uh, you know, would, would listen to them or, 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 or be there for them. Or, or you do some small act of kindness or whatever. Bottom line is this. Listen, wherever life finds us, there's three things. I want you to write these down best you can remember. Where life, wherever life finds you, we are called to be Jesus' witnesses, his ambassadors, and his messengers. His witnesses, his ambassadors, and his messengers. Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. As the saying has been for a while, found people find people. Truly saved people who realize what Jesus Christ did for them, you can't keep that to yourself because it's the best thing since sliced bread. you got to tell somebody when you realize they don't know. When they don't know what you do know. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 20. It says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. I've got two brothers, one two years older than me, one two years uh, younger than me. And we all have a very, very special relationship and stuff. And, and, but, my, but my brothers will tell you, I, I've, never just pastored, I've never just pastored a church. I pastored my family. In fact, um, uh, every grandparent that I had, um, I facilitated their funeral. And um, even when my daddy was alive, I'm still not sure on that, but I'm going to check with him when I get into heaven. But, but I, I say that to say this, that, that um, with, sometimes with your own family, you can get to them easier than waiting on them to get to us. You hear me? So whether that's at home, at school, or the workplace, be willing and don't be ashamed. Otherwise, some, do you ever think about this? When you miss God's memo for the day, guess what? Other people miss their blessing. You did too because you missed the blessing to get to be a blessing. But somebody, left, somebody missed out. Somebody did not get what they, their direct prayers were praying for. God got you right at the opportunity. All you needed to do was say what God was putting on your heart and be the love of Jesus Christ. And you didn't do it. Listen, that's where you got to live, letting the Spirit dial you in. You know, I tell you all the time, listen, I, I'm not just, ju ju I'm, you know, uh, full of some kind of um, uh, energy drink. When I come in here to you, I expect God to work. I expect God to work. Why? Because God's called me to do this. All, all I do is I say, God, help me be who you want me to be and bring anybody that's meant to be with me here and so we can connect. I'm not judging you. I'm not thinking about, again, how high your grass is because the grass in my backyard is much higher. So I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on, hey, God, how can I get out of the way? How can you use me as a vessel? Romans 10, 14, and 15, listen to this. It's about us taking the gospel out. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? 
And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Listen, you need to thank God for the people who deposited Jesus Christ into your heart. And and you need to be that blessing to others so that they can find God through you. You have influence. So God speaks through other people. People, especially when they're letting God speak through them. But number five, God speaks through every season in life. God speaks through every season in life. I think we would all agree in here. Every season teaches you something new, doesn't it? You're always somewhere you've never been before. Listen, the Bible says God has a reason for every season. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. It doesn't matter whether um, it was something God orchestrated or God allowed or happened in your life. God's got purpose for it. God does not waste difficulty. I want you to realize this truth. God teaches us the most. I want you to write this down. God teaches us the most in the valley, in the suffering. Job 36, 15 says, but God teaches people through suffering and he uses distress to open their eyes. You know where I learned to pray the most? Through the trial. You know where you learn to pray the most and draw closer to God in the most? Through the trial. When you ran out of other lifelines. See, that's why, that's why it's oftentimes it's a growing process for us. It's like, like I tell you, I tell one of my boys, I said, the faith that your mom and I live with right now might not be your choice right now, but one day it'll be your only option if you want to move forward. And when you want to talk about that, you come straight to me. I'm not trying, I don't, I, listen, I don't, I don't try to beat my kids side to head with, with, with anything. I just try to love them where they are. Now, all of you parents know good and well, that, that, you, you, just, you, you just learn that's the best approach. Now, again, um, the younger they are, you know, um, I did with my kids the same way um, uh, my mom and dad did with me. Um, you know, I got drugged to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Now y'all know I was Baptist, okay? That's what I'm recovering from. I ain't even going to ask y'all to raise your hands. I was going to say, who's a recovering Baptist? Who's this or that? Listen, I told them when somebody asked what kind of church we are, I said, we are Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, undecided Christian church. Okay, we just, listen, we, really we're aligned with what most of them are, and that is, listen, we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we believe the word of God is the word of God. Amen? Amen. All right, now, and sometimes that's all you need to be, to be together on something. Listen, all of us know what it's like to have not lived totally in God's will. And so God has to allow things into your life to shake you up and get you up and wake you up. And so, so that, listen, the pastor I am right now is because God allowed me to go through some really, really dark times and really, really hurt like you've hurt, it's just in different fashions, so that I could relate to other people's hurt. So I could understand that, listen, life is not all what you paint it. You don't get to wake up each day and say, well, hey, I don't want to have any trials today. It doesn't matter what track you own, you're going to have trials. But I will say this, would you agree? Trials are much easier to deal with with Jesus than without. Have you ever looked back and God points out to you that he saved you? He rescued you before you wrecked yourself totally. He stopped some of you from taking your own life. He rescued you, some of you, in accidents that should have taken your life. You had times where you just would have unraveled, and yet God, somehow, his grace abounded. Romans 2, 4 says, don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? Listen, God doesn't shake things up to make things worse. God shakes things up to make things better than they ever would have been otherwise. Listen, God uses the circumstances in your life and my life to get our full attention, to wake us up, to grow us up, and hopefully get us where we're meant to go. But number six, God speaks through his only son, Jesus. God speaks through his only son, Jesus. It is through God's son, Jesus, and the 33 years that he lived on this earth and how he died for us that we see the glory of God, we see the heart of God, we see the character of God. In fact, Jesus was always saying, you know, I, I, the, the son only does what the father wants. He was about his father's business. He, he was only trying to mirror his father. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, it says, Long ago God spoke many times in many ways to our ancestors through prophets. And now in these final days he's spoken to us through his son. 
the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. Listen, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection speaks to us that God is love. God is grace. And God has power, so much power that he can even resurrect the dead. John 1, verses 14 and 16 says, So the word became human. It's talking about Jesus here. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Verse 16 says, From his abundance we have all received one gracious blessing after another. If somebody was to tell me, well, you know what, I've been a Christian for a while, but I just haven't, I haven't um, uh, experienced, um, you know, one gracious blessing after another. You're still here, aren't you? He's holding you up, isn't he? He got you up. He got you out. Some, some of you, you know what I mean when I say that you've had times in your life where you were lucky to get out to bed, but he's getting you up and he's getting you out and he's taking you forward and he's sustaining you even when you couldn't sustain yourself. You get one gracious blessing after another if you're really looking if you're really listening. And by the way, the, it doesn't matter the path. Once you start walking with God, listening for the voice of God, walking in agreement with God's word and his spirit and his people, listen, blessings follow. It, it, it's, it's the good path. Some of you don't know this. You need church family. Listen, in today's society, I would argue that a church family is more important than it's ever been because the world we live at, the, I, y'all don't know how I feel about text messaging. I don't call. I know it's sad to some of you. I do not call a text message conversation. Okay? Not that you can't converse. You can with people you already got relationship with. But how many of you know sometimes you need some Jesus with skin? You need, to, you need somebody else to be by you. You need someone else to be with you and someone to walk with you. We all need each other. I couldn't do it without other people. You, you, whether you think so or not, again, just your presence encourages me. It goes, well, you know what? It's not a waste to seek to try to do what God would have me to do. Romans 5, 8 says, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die while we were still sinners. You know why I know that God um, loves us no matter the sin? Because he loved us before he ever forgave us. He, he made the first move towards us. He didn't, he didn't wait till we cleaned up our act. He didn't wait until the world was any better. He said, no, I love people too much. I don't even want one to perish. So I'm sending my son out of my great love. So it says, God showed his great love by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, I want to say something to you. Some people, they, they um, see certain people on social media and, and, and hear about some horrific thing they did, and they just start saying, I mean, even professing Christians, I hope so-and-so goes to hell. Well, God doesn't. You don't have to like somebody to love them, okay? That is something we learn, isn't it, over time? Um, and it still don't mean you <laughs> love them in the sense that you like to have lunch, okay? But you love them because... He loves them. Listen, we're supposed to mirror the Father. So we, we love as he loved. Listen, God has spoken through his son. I love you. I love you. I'm willing to forgive you. And I came to heal you, to save you, to change you. And, and I'm not just here for, for you, but all those that, that you might be messengers to. But last but not least, number seven, God speaks through prophetic dreams and visions. God speaks through prophetic dreams and visions. Now, I'm not saying here that God speaks through every dream or vision. Again, sometimes it's God, sometimes it's gas. Sometimes it's what, you, um, what medication you took that night. I've had that stuff happen before, but I want you to hear me. God does speak through dreams. God does speak through revelation of vision. In fact, the Bible says even where there's no vision, the people perish, okay? The, the Bible gives us guidelines, okay? It gives us the truth. It gives us the principles. It gives us the processes. But God can reveal something to you any way he chooses. The vision doesn't necessarily always come out the way you see it. You just need to believe that God's leading you this direction. That makes sense? You, you, you can't, it, you, sometimes you get wrong because you're just dreaming. God works in the unconventional ways. It's not a matter of it looking like 
you want it to be. The Bible says you commit all your plans to the Lord and your plans will succeed. So that now in my life, I've learned this 30 and a half years later in the ministry, is I'm just saying, God, it's not a matter of how many people we have in attendance. It's not a matter of me getting all my words out. It's not a matter of this or that looking like that. God, it is a matter of us walking in obedience with you and leaving the results with you. But I believe that as we plant, as we water the right way, God brings the growth and it's going to blow your mind one day what you're going to see happen through faithful people like you as God moves us forward. And I, that's not Craig's speech. That's Christ's speech. And I'm going to let you know this much too, just in case you need it. Can't do it without you. We need every single soldier that God is calling to be a part of this mission. And we, you have our commitment to this. We want to help you discover God's best for your life. Not abuse you, but make sure that God gets to use you fully for his glory. Look at Acts 2.17. It says, in the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And by the way, you're never too old to dream. The dream just looks different. Don't retire. Listen to me. I mean, I, I, this is something I'm passionate about. It, 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 seniors, sometimes your availability is greater than any of the others. Do not retire because God's still got purpose for you in the present. It just looks different than it did in the past. Listen, I still remember the first time that God gave me clear vision, and I was just taking that in. But now I've learned to un unpack it and realize that, hey, God can speak anytime. We just got to be listening. Job 33, 14, and 15, it says, For God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in dreams and visions of the night when deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. I love this quote that I want to read to you that helps you sort of filter all that we talked about. Senior pastor of Father's House wrote this. He said, many voices exist in the spirit world. Therefore, whatever is heard must be tested. Does it exalt Jesus Christ? Does it comply with scripture? Does it put the interests of others before self-interest? Does it encourage unity in the body of Christ? Does it seek peace of all? Does it give hope no matter what it speaks of? Does it have respect for human life? Does it speak of the love of God? The answer to these questions will help you distinguish whether it's the voice of God from other voices. Would you bow your heads with me today? Dear Heavenly Father God, who are we that you are mindful of us? Who are we, Lord, that you choose to send your only son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for our sins? and our salvation. Lord, who are we, Lord, that you speak to us, Lord, through your, your amazing creation, Lord, through your word and owner manual of life, Lord, through the Holy Spirit that you place within us, God, through the people that you send our way, through the circumstances, Lord, that you work all together, Lord, for, for our good of those who love you and for your glory. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and how it, it reveals your love to us and your love for us. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that, that you give us dreams, you give us visions. God, show us what you want for us. God, as individuals and as a church, God, Lord, may we walk confidently forward, Lord, knowing that all we're wanting to do is walk hand in hand with you. Lord, if we do that, we're going to get where you have for us to go, and it's going to be better than we even think. God, I pray if there's anyone listening right now who does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And Lord, I pray today would be today. They admit their sin. They believe in you, Jesus, God's Son, that you died on the cross for their sins and that you overcame death and sin through the grave in your resurrection. I pray that they would ask you into their hearts and let you take over the lordship of their life. God, for others that, Lord, today all you wanted to do was get their full attention. You needed to get them back dialed in to looking to you, leaning on you, um, listening to you. I pray, God, that we all would stay on our knees before you, Lord, knowing that you and you alone can take us to the good, good things that you have for us. Lord, we, we express our gratitude to you right now. We thank you for everything that you have done, that you are doing, and that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us? This altar is open. It's definitely a place of grace. And I'm available over here should you need to come and speak with me.